Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you because you are never tired of us. We say take all glory. We say take all honor. We say take all adorations in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you do in the morning. Thank you for what you do in the afternoon. Father, this is the evening lecture. Father, we pray that, O Lord God of heaven, you will bless us in this lecture as well in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, because we believe you have answered Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, you remember that we have been talking about knowing the past, present, and the future for quite some time now. And uh, today, as God will help us, we'll be concluding that topic by discussing on designing of spirits. And we'll be examining designing of spirit from three perspectives. Number one, A, exposing the devil. B, heavenly messengers. C, apostle and spiritual experiences. So this is the three perspectives through which we'll be examining the signing of spirits. Uh, when we talk about exposing the devil, before we talk about exposing the devil, heavenly messengers, apostles and spiritual experiences, let me give a background. Uh, angels, whether the fallen angels, or the holy angels, all of them are spirit beings. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 14. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 14. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 14. Open your Bible. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 14. Look at verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister? For them who shall be heirs of salvation. So when, when God created angels, He make all of them to be spirits. Look at verse 7. Verse 7. And of the angel he said, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? All the angels of God are spirit beings. But along the line, some of them stage a coup against God. And the coup was led by no other person than the devil. So one third of the angel were actually stage a coup against God Almighty. Look at Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Open your Bible together with me. Revelation chapter 12. I read from verse 7. He said, There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. The dragon there is the devil. You should understand that it's the devil. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angel and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, we deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So when the I was war in heaven, devil and all the angels that follow him, and they are about one third of the total angel in heaven. Look at verse 4. And he stayed drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and they cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour a child as soon as it was born. You see there? So angel, one third of the angels in heaven followed the devil to stage a coup 
against God. They actually wanted to overthrow God. Look at Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. I read first 12. Isaiah chapter 14. I read first 12. Look at Isaiah chapter 14. First 12. Open your Bible together with me. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. Look at verse 12. How are thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of morning? How are thou caught down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne about the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. That was the plan. He wanted to overthrow God. He want to be like God. He want to sit in the seat of God Almighty. And that is actually what started the war in heaven. And Michael, Michael is the head of the war in Egypt. Michael and his angel, they now, now fight with the angel that were following the devil and they couldn't prevail. They were casted to the earth. Look at that Revelation chapter 12 once again. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Let's read it again. Revelation chapter 12. I read verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, we deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angel were cast out with him. So they were casted out and they were spirit being. So some of them cannot exist, cannot stay without occupying somebody. So they are just spirit being. So they are just spirit being. They are falling angels. And you see, because they are spirit being, ordinary eyes cannot see them. They may be with you, they may be around you, you will not be able to know, you will not be able to see them because they are spirit being. They don't have body as we have body. They are spirit being, so they cannot be seen. So if perhaps for one reason or the other, that God open your eyes, we are now talking about exposing the devil. If perhaps now God open your eyes, and you are able to see the devil around you or the demon around you, then you are not seeing them with your ordinary eyes. Your spiritual eyes have been open, and you are now seeing to the realm of the spirit. Now, when you are seeing to the realm of the spirit, you'll be able to identify the nature of that evil spirit. Let me give you a practical example. The practical example I want to give, one, we had a night vigil on Friday. And uh, when we finished the night vigil, uh, everybody went to go and sleep, including myself. And as I was just uh, waking up in my house, so my wife came to call me that some people want to see me, that uh, they said that one of their children is having a problem. I should come and pray for the child. I say, you say, I'm just waking up. I've not even observed my own personal prayer. So my wife encouraged me that day that I should go, that she will be praying for me at all. So I left. As I was going on the road, I was praying, I was praying. I said, God, you see, I've not done my personal prayer. So I was praying all along, I was praying all along. So when I got to the place, uh, eventually I met a lot of people there. The boy in question was a Muslim boy. So they are Malam and all their Islam leaders, they were there reciting their Islamic prayer. Everywhere was already flooded with water. Everywhere in that place was already flooded with water. Because uh, everywhere was already flooded with water. Hallelujah. So everywhere was flooded with water. Because the boy was possessed by a demon, spirit of death. And he was crying. Leave me alone. I must go today. 
I must die today. And so they were pouring water upon him, thinking that as they were pouring water upon him, that will cool down his body. But the more they pour water upon him, the stronger he becomes. And hefty men were holding him down so that he will not escape from there. I've never seen that type of scenario, scenario in my life. He was highly possessed with the spirit of devil. But there, as I was sitting down there, the Lord released upon me the spirit of faith. You know, we have studied nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have studied nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, when we are talking about the power gifts, we mentioned three of them. We say faith, working of miracle, and the gift of healings. So as I was standing there, God had already given me spirit of faith, was released the gift of faith into me. So they were pouring water upon the boy. Everywhere was flooded. I couldn't go near because everywhere was flooded with water. So I said, stop pouring water upon this boy. And another layman there said, anything I can do to help them, I should please do. I said, me, I cannot enter inside the water. And so because all of them that have been tried, they couldn't help the boy. So they had no alternative, even though I was a pastor. They had no alternative than to allow me to pray for him. But I told them, I can't enter inside the water. So they had to brought the boy out of the water. Helped him and still holding him. So they have to brought the boy outside the water and take him to a dry place. So I went there to pray for him. Why I wanted to pray for him? They are still holding him very tight because that demon made him to be so strong and was telling them he has to die that day and he has to go that day. So they were holding him down. So I laid my hand upon him and I just pray a simple prayer. I said, Thou spirit, remember, before I started the prayer, God has ministered to me the gift of faith. So it wasn't my faith, it was if the faith from God. It was manifestation of the gift of faith. Hallelujah. So I lay my hand upon the boy and I said, Thou spirit of death, I command you, leave him alone in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Less than a minute prayer. So I ask the people that are holding him. I say, leave the boy. Ah, they were looking at themselves. You mean we should leave him? I say, leave him. They leave him. I say, stand up. He stood up. So I say, go and give. Everybody was just watching. His body has cooled down. No more problem. The demon has gone. I said, go and give him food to eat. That was the end of the drug. So I left there and I went to my house. But the evening of that night, something strange happened. My baby, it's still a small baby, was lying on the bed and I was uh, sitting by his side. So my wife was sitting on the chair. So the boy just cried in the night. The boy just cried out of sleep. And so you know women now. So my wife was saying, please help me check that boy. So I checked, I was facing where I was lying down because I was also sitting on the bed. I was facing where I was lying down. I checked at the boy. And uh, I discovered that uh, nothing was wrong with the boy so that is my own assessment but after i look at the boy the boy stopped crying but then as i was turning my face back to where my wife is i just saw the spirit of death by our wardrobe so by that time i wasn't seen with my physical sense with my physical eyes I've already entered, that is the designing of spirit. I've already entered into the spirit realm. So I saw that spirit, then I commanded 
You see, once you are have entered into the spirit realm, then you are no longer a physical person. So now I follow that spirit. I saw you out. And it was going out. That spirit of death. Remember, once you enter into the spirit realm, you are no longer a physical being. You are already a spirit being. So I have to follow that spirit to the gate and make sure that it left my the vicinity of my house before I return back. But you remember that I was sitting down on the bed, so it was my spirit that was moving. So, but that is the signing of the spirit, because I was seeing the spirit, no human being. So that's not a spiritual fisher. Are you following that? And not only that, I was not seeing human being; that I was seeing a spirit being, the spirit of death. Now that spirit was there as at the time I was seeing it. That is a designing of the spirit. Spiritual vision could be something past something future or something happening presently somewhere but when you designing of the spirit is uh, something that is happening right there where you are so you are seeing open vision not spiritual vision open vision so and you are able to discover the type of the spirit because as I saw that spirit, I was able to know that is the spirit of death. He actually dressed in white. So, but immediately I saw it, I was, I know in my spirit, it is the spirit of death. That is the signing of the spirit. So when the gift of the sign of spirit is operating in your life, you are able to expose the devil. First Corinthians chapter 12. You are able to expose the devil. First Corinthians chapter 12. Open your Bible together with me. First Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 12. Are you there? I read fast. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, designing of spirits. You are able to discern the type of spirit. It is. If it is the spirit of God, you know. If it is angel of God, you know. If it is spirit of the devil, you know. You also know the type of spirit he is, whether the spirit of death, whether the spirit of infirmity, whether the spirit of insanity, whatever type of spirit it is, you'll be able to discern. Hallelujah. Be able to discern. To another, the working of miracle, to another prophecy, to another designing of spirits. So that day, I was the story I was sharing with you, it was the spirit of death. Probably the spirit of death casted out of that boy that I went to go and pray for in the morning. Now say, so if we can't take this boy, then we take your baby. Well, you can't take my baby because Jesus died for the boy. Not my baby that died for the bomb. Hallelujah. 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 So Jesus Christ has finished the work of the deliverance of everybody. everybody. So the blood of Jesus Christ is a price paid for the deliverance of every man. Look at Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame me by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the dead. You see that? So Jesus Christ shed his blood to destroy the power of the devil over every person that we ever live upon the face of the earth so the sacrifice have been made no other sacrifice 
So it was on the basis of what Christ did that I asked to cast out that devil. You can't take, lay claim on the life of this boy. So, and he has to honor the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Less than a mini prayer. And the, the boy was okay. But the point we are talking, we are concerned here is the spirit that now came later in the night into my house. And we didn't even know any spirit is inside the house anyway. With the exception that the boy that was sleeping cried. And my wife said I should help her to check that baby. And I was looking at the baby only to discover when I was turning back my feet that the spirit of death was by the wardrobe. And I had to chase him out in the name of Jesus. So, you see, we got to be able to have this uh, gift functioning in our life. At another time, somebody did something bad. A lady. Somewhere outside Ibadan. So, and right there I was in that place. So I disciplined her, I rebuked her. Or knowing that this lady was a... Uh, in Yoruba, they call it a Mary. I think uh, you call it a Banji. Now, I didn't know that she was a, a, a Mary. So I rebuke her. This is a lady who doesn't even know where I live in Ibadan. Doesn't know my house, doesn't know anything. So I returned back to Ibadan that day. My wife and my children were sleeping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I was praying. So she entered inside my room. Immediately she entered inside my room. I saw her. Oh, remember, this is not a physical body now. Because the door is locked, everywhere is locked. So it is not a physical body that is inside, inside the room to come and meet with me. So if not that God opened my eyes, I wouldn't have seen it. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So immediately I saw it, I, so and so, I mentioned her name. So I said, so you are a Mary. Because I, immediately I recognized it was the spirit of a Mary. Immediately she discovered that I have seen her. She ran away. Amen? So you need the operation or the designing of spirit in your life. So the demonic spirit can come into your house. If your house is not open, you will not know. And God forbid they can carry out any uh, any uh, dangerous assignments. So that's why you need to pray from today. I'm just giving you two examples. So the gift of designing of spirit is to be able to expose the devils anywhere they are. And when we are talking about designing of the spirit, it means they are present around that place. Because if they are not present, you won't see them. Even if your eyes is open. So it is something that is happening right there that you are seeing. Amen? Amen? That's what you mean by designing of the spirit. You are seeing into the realm of the spirit. And you are able to see the spirit, demonic spirit around. And you even know their name, the kind of spirit they have. That's why it is called designing of spirit. You are able to import. Okay, you are spirit so and so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it is the operation of designing of spirit that makes us to be able to design. 
the presence of evil spirits, the presence of demonic spirit. Now, let me say this thing before I go, because you can also discern evil spirit through the word of knowledge, not the sign of the spirit now. You are not seeing anything. You only receive a word of knowledge from God. Are you with me? Are you with me? I will explain. I will explain. Now, there was a day I was preaching in the church. It was a Sunday service. A particular lady was sitting down somewhere. This lady will look at me and snub me. So, I don't know what was happening. So, I will turn my face to another place. And you know there is no way you can be facing only one direction if you are preaching. You will be looking about in the congregation. So, as I was uh, looking about in the congregation, my eyes will still go back to her. She will still look at me and snub me. So, I will take my eyes away and face another direction. But right in my heart, I was asking, Oh Lord, what is happening? And God told me that that is marine spirit that is operating in her. So when God has given that's the word of knowledge, I didn't say anything. I didn't say to the realm of the spirit. Are you following? Okay. That is a word of knowledge. So once I receive that one of word of knowledge. And I face that direction confidently. I say some people are in the church. And they are mani spirit, ma manifesting the spirit, marine spirits. Immediately I say some people are in the church and they are manifesting marine spirit. See, fear that almost want to collapse. You understand now? So, I conquered that spirit when it was exposed. So, he couldn't look at my face again. So, the lady has to be looking down until I finish my message. Exposing the devil. So, we can also expose the devil by the word of knowledge. By the word of what? Word of uh, knowledge. There was a day we had to have a night vigil in the church. So I was in a room praying. So a lady entered inside the church. So immediately he entered inside the church. Right from her voice, he was greeting the people in the church. Right from her voice, I noticed that is a seducing spirit. That's word of knowledge, not the sign of the spirit. Amen. Amen. So I call my wife. Who is that person that just entered the church? He told me it's uh, so and so. I said that woman has a seducing spirit. So because of her, that night, that night vigil, we have to turn that vigil into deliverance session. So exposing the devil. So, but particularly, you know, we are discussing about the signing of spirits now. But you can also expose them through the word of knowledge. Now, let's talk about B part, heavenly messenger. Heavenly messenger. When we say heavenly messenger, we mean angels of God. Angels of God. Look at Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Heavenly messengers. Acts chapter 10. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10. I read from verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion. Of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, 
which gave much harm to the people and pray to God always. He saw in the vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, calling us. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it? So this man was actually seen into the realm of the spirit. He was actually seen to the realm of the spirit. So he was able to see the angel of God who now brought a message for him. For him. Look at Genesis 32. Genesis chapter 32. Open your Bible. Genesis chapter 32. Look at verse 1. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. And he called the name of the place Mahanaime. So God opened the eyes of Jacob, was able to see the angels of God. So this is the signing of spirit. Not only that he saw them, he was able to know that they are also good angels that belong to God. This is the operation of designing of spirits. We are able to recognize heavenly messengers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what we mean by heavenly messengers. You can identify them through the operation of designing of spirits. Then finally, let us talk about apostle and spiritual experiences. Before you can call somebody an apostle, but there are many people who are using that title who doesn't know the meaning. Before you can call somebody an apostle, that person must have seen Jesus. In other words, God will open his eyes. He will see Jesus. Look at First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. I want you to open your Bible together with me. First Corinthians chapter 9. That's why we term that section uh, Apostle and Spiritual Experiences. Look at First Corinthians chapter 9. I read first one. Am I not an apostle? This is Paul speaking. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? And not ye my walk in the law. So one of the qualifications of being an apostle is that you must see Jesus. Not that somebody is telling you that Jesus came into this world. Jesus died. Jesus resurrected on the third day. But if you are going to be an apostle, you must see Jesus by yourself. It's, your message is not something that is handed over to you by somebody else. It is communicated into you by Jesus himself before you can be called an apostle. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So in other words, for you to see Jesus Christ, before we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, before you can see Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ has put on a body now that it's not accessible to a physical eye. So before you can see Jesus Christ now, it means we have to see to the realm of the spirit by the operation of the sign of the spirit. So when Jesus is around, and he's always around us, but you don't see him because your spiritual eyes are not open. So when your spiritual eyes is open, you will see him. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Are you there with me? Are you there with me? First Corinthians chapter 11. Are you there? Look at verse 23. This is Paul speaking. For I have received of the Lord. Jesus Christ appeared to him and taught him what I want to read up now. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, 
he break it and said, take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. These do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had shoved, say, this cup is the New Testament in my body. This do ye as often as you drink it, in, in remembrance of me. So nobody taught Apostle Paul about Holy Communion. It was Jesus that appeared to him and was explaining to him how he took the bread, took the cup before he died. It wasn't something that was handed over to Paul. So if you are going to be an apostle, you, have, you must have a deep spiritual experiences. If, if you are using, I'm an apostle, I am this. You should know the meaning of what you are talking about. Not just I believe. You must see Jesus. Jesus must appear to you. Amen? Amen? So anybody to be called an apostle, must have a deep spiritual experience. So, and for you to see Jesus Christ, it means we are seeing to the realm of the Spirit. That's the meaning. You are seeing to the realm of the Spirit. The operation or the signing of Spirit is functioning in your life. That's how you can see Jesus Christ. So Paul saw Jesus. If you are going to be an apostle of Jesus of Christ also, because you are an ambassador, he has to commission you by himself. So not that uh, he will do it through a third party. No! Not that a third party will be telling you about Jesus. No! You have to have a personal encounter with him. You see him before you can be commissioned. To be an apostle. So I doubt whether many people that are calling themselves apostle or apostle today have seen Jesus. I don't know. But for you to be an apostle, that's one of the qualifications. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 again. Look at it. Am I not an apostle? Have I not, am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are ye not my work in the Lord? Let's bow down our head and talk to God in prayer. See, Jesus, I thank you for what you have taught me today. I really worship you. I really adore you. I really magnify your name. Begin to worship him. Begin to adore him. Begin to magnify his holy name. Tell him, I thank you for what you have taught me today. And tell him, I want the operation or the designing of spirit to begin to operate in my life from now onward. Talk to him in prayer. Tell him. Tell him.